Cryptocurrency and scams, the most iconic duo. They go together like peanut butter and jelly. Today, a once massive streamer was exposed for stealing $500,000, roughly, from his fans. This is the story of Ice Poseidon and CX Coin. I'm sure you've heard of Ice Poseidon at some point. He used to be the most influential streamer on Twitch, but over the years he's faded into obscurity like a fart in the wind, just fleeting but stinking the entire time. Ice Poseidon's a name you still can't even really mention on Twitch, it's like Voldemort, because he got banned on there quite a while ago, and then we made the switch to YouTube, he never quite recovered. So his channel really faded, and now it's just kind of like talking about a fossil. But last year, he made kind of a resurgence, he announced a cryptocurrency called CX Coin. Now even just at a surface level, knowing nothing about Ice Poseidon, it still seems like a stupid thing to invest in, just a random streamer who has no technological background announcing a cryptocurrency. You'd have to be pretty close to overdosing on Xanax to think that that's a worthwhile investment, but knowing his past makes it even goofier. Ice Poseidon has a history of openly scamming people and being super honest with it. He even went on stream one time just fully admitting to a Ponzi scheme he was running. In order for the investors to make their money back, uh, what we do is we grow the company to a certain point and then we have other investors come in and obviously they invest their money as well Hopefully more than two so, million so dollars And then scheme. obviously when we get more than two million dollars invested yeah, they're, they're, the other investors will get their two mil okay. back It's not a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme. Okay. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it because I didn't explain that very well I guess that is the textbook definition of a Ponzi scheme. It's like he fucking read it right off of Webster's and he's just super honest with it. He also talked about the time he used to fish credit cards. Like, he openly has admitted to scams in the past. And yet, for some reason, when he announced this cryptocurrency, people still put money into it. And I'm sure, just like a Darman video, they live to regret it. Because, goddamn, uh, a video came out today where CoffeeZilla dove in and proved that Ice Poseidon took it, almost $500,000 from that cryptocurrency. Just rug pulled it. And it's a great video, I highly encourage you to watch it. I'm going to show a couple of clips here. But he does a great job of laying it all out, and even brings Ice Poseidon himself on the horn, who openly admits again to stealing the money and refusing to give it back, even though he openly says, yes, I took the money. It's an actual fucking felony. The dude just openly admits to defrauding investors. It's, it's crazy. Like, he, I understand Ice Poseidon's damn near illiterate, but it's also shocking just how dumb he is sometimes. He openly on CoffeeZilla's interview says, yeah, I took the money. No, I'm not giving it back. To half a million dollars, and I'm gonna prove it. He personally profited $300,000 by stealing money out of a crypto scheme that he set up. And when I confronted Ice Poseidon, who's better known by his real name, Paul Danino, about this scam, he was shockingly honest. You wanna keep the money that's not yours, that you took from the project, even though you'd failed, to deliver. I mean, I'm not really sure what you want me to say, but yeah. I'm trying to like get you to return the money because it's 100% still available and you could do that. Yeah, I could give the money back. It is within my power, um, but I'm gonna look out for myself and not do that. I, I, you know, I don't like know what else to say. That's just the most honest answer. Ice Poseidon's like Ed from Ed, Ed, Nettie, the one that just keeps talking about buttered toast. But if he was a criminal, it is, he's, he's honestly, I swear to God, like that stupid cartoon character that you'd think could never really exist in the real world, but somehow he does. But not only that, I truly believe Ice Poseidon thinks he's done nothing wrong. In the CoffeeZilla interview, there's a point where CoffeeZilla mentions that the people he took this money from are people that are less well off than he is. Somehow there are sentient, living, breathing human beings that for some reason were convinced this was a good idea to put money into. I, I, I just don't get it. For some reason, anytime cryptocurrency is mentioned, people just turn their brain off, hop on MetaMask, and dump their entire fucking life savings into poop-ass dog pussy coin and think that they're going to make a billion dollars off of it. Like, I don't get it, but it keeps happening. And CoffeeZilla mentions, like, hey, those people that you took the money from, they don't have that much money. And Ice Poseidon's like, oh, well, I don't like it when you say it like that. Now, I pleaded with Paul, or Ice Poseidon, to return the money that he stole, in part appealing to the guilt that he was taking money from his fans who were all much worse off than him. Ice Poseidon's response was that he didn't like how that made him sound. I don't know if you're aware of the fact that your average fan has way less money than you. So you're just taking from poor people. Like, you understand that, right? That is definitely not, that, that is not a good way to put it. That's a pretty shitty way to put it, my dude. 
It's, uh, I think it's a pretty shitty thing to do. So he clearly doesn't like to be confronted with the hard truth of what he actually did. So he's trying to like spin it somehow in his mind where he's not the bad guy. He's not the evil supervillain. So he's like, oh, no, no, this was actually a righteous thing to do. In fact, I'm like the Batman of crypto or, or some shit. Like he doesn't like it when you explain to him that what he actually did is just scam people less fortunate than he is. And he, I really feel like he has this some kind of main character syndrome or hero complex. Because at the end of CoffeeZilla's video, spoiler alert, he does mention that he'll give back 155 grand. And then, like, what, expects us to pat him on the ass for it because he's giving back a fraction of the total amount that he stole? This goofy goober already stated in the interview he could give the full amount back if he wanted to. He just simply doesn't want to. He's a schoolyard bully, and he doesn't want to share his popsicles with the, the rest of the class. And, like, we're supposed to, like, thank him for the 155 grand that he's willing to shave off of his pubic hair for us. He's just giving us some crumbs back. And then it turns out he didn't even give 155 grand back, he gave 40 grand back, so he couldn't even be bothered to do, like, the full amount of his apology return. It's fucking shocking. Like, just imagine being robbed. They steal your TV, they steal your Xbox, PlayStation, they steal all your electronics. But then a week later, you get a, a box from the burglar and he sent you the TV remote back and nothing else. What, are you supposed to, like, write a thank you note to them? Like, hey, fuck yeah, at least now I got this back. You know anything about that? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, not rugged, but, uh, I mean... Well, someone pulled all the liquidity out. That's a, that's a rug, right? That would be a rug, yes. Uh, but there is still liquidity in there. 40k got left and 300k got ripped out or something like that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that is exactly what happened. Right. Are you laughing? I mean, is that funny? Mm, I mean, no. You're hearing this right. He's admitting he took out 90% of the money, but that's not a rug pull, apparently. $300,000 is in there. There's two options, right? Leave the money in there, and then if BNB goes down to like $100, the money goes to shit anyways, or I could take it and the money is not just going to dust. I love that explanation there for like his reasoning of stealing 300 grand. It's like, I was faced with two choices, the ultimatum, you know, the red or the blue pill. Do I let the money sit there and hit zero in this fucking poop project that I've started? Or do I take the investor's money, 300 grand for myself, and then at least it never hits zero? I'm sure the investors wanted you to have that money, Paul. I'm, I'm sure they were really like breathing a sigh of relief like, oh, Fuck, what a hero. That money was about to hit zero, but luckily, all of the money I invested went to Paul instead. So now I've lost all of it, but, you know, at least Paul's got it. I'll just call it a scam. I know you don't want to call it a scam, but it is a scam. So what did you make off this? Well, I got 55% and then 45% went to uh, my developers. So I don't know, probably like 300,000. Nice. What a, what a good what a good profit from doing, um, I mean, how long did you work on this project? Like seriously, how long did you work? I'm just curious. Well, like you said, it was a fork, so, I don't know, a couple weeks. 300,000 fat clams for two weeks worth of work, and I'm sure he inflated that. I, I don't think he did two weeks worth of work for this at all. And, uh, yeah, I highly encourage you to watch the CoffeeZilla video. It is absolutely wild. I'll put a link to it in the description. It is a shockingly honest insight into the mind of a serial scammer. And the way that he reasons things and like blames the people who got scammed, it's crazy. So I just wanted to talk about this because I thought this was fucking crazy. I thought it was nutty. So yeah, that's about it. See ya.